Hello, and welcome to Sun Place Cupid. Now, before we start the game, I have something very important to say about it. So, I was reading some of, you know, the description of the game, the comments, you know, people posting about the game itself. Now, the creators of the game say that this is a game not meant for people 16 under. So, if you're 16 and above, then go ahead and experience it with me. If not, then maybe it would be better if you left. However, I played a few minutes of the game, and it doesn't seem that bad. Now, obviously, if you're a goddamn seven-year-old, then why are you not in here? Please leave. But um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't seem too bad. Now, there's a lot of dark factors to the game. I will say that. So, if you're not comfortable with dark type of games that are kind of like depressing because this seems like a very dark depressing type of game uh then this is not the video for you it would be better for you to click on something else um regardless of all of that um if the game gets to a point in which i have to censor a lot uh there's a lot of trigger warnings then i might discontinue it from 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 my channel because it, it would be kind of stupid to censor half of the goddamn game you know i could put it for 18 plus but i don't know if i really have if i really want to do that so if the game if i stop suddenly playing the game is because of that and if i get it to the end then fantastic but yeah keep in mind it has dark elements to it um it's kind of a depressing storyline However, just by the few minutes I played with I played I played it, um it sounds really interesting. So please please keep in mind that and let's start. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. There's no need to explain. It's only natural. A mother loves her daughter more than anything else in the world. He hates you, doesn't he? The whole lot of them despise you, don't they? Chasing you into the forest and gouging a hole into your leg. All because you smile at their husbands. And you know what? You deserve it. You freak. You disgusting, horrible, filthy little girl. Didn't I tell you to stay away from them? You never listen. Serves you right for being the dirty girl you are. But you don't have to worry, my darling. It's alright. Even if the whole world wishes you dead, I promise you this. Your mother will always be by your side. My goodness, child. Whatever has happened to you? A girl was slumped in the doorway, soaked by the rain. Her legs were covered in dirt and blood. She lifted her head upon hearing the priest's voice and stared at him with blank eyes. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. She hobbled forwards, her blood, her bloodied leg given away. Automatically, the priest rushed towards the, to steady, to steady her. Years of spiritual training had prepared him for the most unexpected guest to this church. <clears throat> he sprang into action. He urged her to a pew, brought her some clean clothes, a clean cloth an antiseptic and began to bandage the wood on her leg. Yet throughout all this, he found that he couldn't take his eyes off her. He would be gazing at the roll of bandages in his hand, deciding how to use them. And then, out of nowhere, he would be staring into her eyes. Even with all the mud and grim smeared across her face, he couldn't deny that she was absolutely beautiful. How old was she? 20, 18, 16. Her face was so young. The priest had long since aged by his desire for the opposite sex, but somehow, something about her erupted him. When he realized his own thoughts, he quickly steered his mind towards the matters. My child, what happened to you? He seemed to take all the time in the world before responding. He looked at me, looked, he looked at me, and he touched me, and then 
and then he started to kiss me. At first the priest didn't understand. Then there he realized with the old of anger what she meant. It was happening more and more often nowadays. The young men of France these days were spirited, uncontrollable ruffians. A lady walking home by herself at night would be prey to, to a few numbers of them. Lust. One of the seven deadly sins, the one that the priest personally despised the most. Furrowing his brow in some what? Furrowing in Furrowing his brow in sorrow, the priest laid a hand on her thigh. You are safe now, child. God's house is sanctuary for the faithful. I don't think he'll protect me. He looked at her in confusion. You see, father, I have sinned again. Right there among the pews before the altar of God, she bowed her head. I'm sorry. She was apologizing to him for some, someone else. Her hair hid her face and her eyes, and the priest could make neither head nor tail of her. He suddenly raised, realized that his hand was still on her thigh, and he humanly drew it away. Hurriedly, not humanly. I'm sorry. She repeated this phrase over and over. After a while, the priest got up. Don't fret, child. You're not to blame. It will c I will contact the local constable, but in the meantime, you are free to make yourself at home here. I will teach you. I would fetch you a hot drink. I just woke up and I cannot see what I'm reading. He patted her hand and left to go back to the room. She remained seated on the pew, her head bent forward. As the priest's footsteps faded away, the entire church fell into silence. <sighs> now that it was the dead of night, the clouds covered the sky. Barely in the silver moonlight filtered through the statues of glass. The girl sat alone in the ring of darkness. She opened her mouth. Now, no, I know. If I may say my peace, surely. Yes, yes, I know, mother. But he is so very kind. Have you learned your lesson, idiot? I fear for your safety. You know, whoever this mother is, is kind of a... Bitch, <laughs> to say the least. So, um... I'm not gonna go for being even more of a dick to you, okay? <laughs> I feel so bad for you. I fear for your safety. Child, follow mother's words and leave. You saw the look in his eyes, didn't you? You cannot stay here. Even a man of God can stain you with the filthiest of colors. Be a good girl and follow mother's words. But... It is cold outside, Mother. The rain has not let up. Can't I stay? No. Please, yes, listen, don't. We leave now and that is final. I will not hear another argument. I, I'm sorry. Please don't be angry, Mother. I understand, I shall leave at once. How am I going to mind you like this? You attract the most misfortune. You attract so much misfortune everywhere you go. This is all your fault, my poor child. My stupid little girl. Always a blight, aren't you? Whatever will you do without me? I'm sorry, mother. Thank you for always guiding me. It is all my fault. The girl sat in silence. Mother was right. After all, she was always right. Everything was her fault. Her, her fist shook with a mi mixture of fear and conviction. She had to do penance. Mother, give me strength. There is something I wish to do. The girl rose from the pew. In front of her was the altar and on top of the altar was, a, was an ornately decorated cross. It was a white, it's a, I can't read. 
It was as white as her head, and the tip of the cross had been crafted such that it was razor sharp. Sharp. She left the pew, knelt briefly, and then walked over to the altar. Don't tell me. You're quite sure you're doing this? The girl's arm trembled ever so slightly. What other ways is there for me to be to atone? She picked up the cross. Oh, my darling daughter. Mother is proud of you. Slowly, she brought the sharp end close to her face. So close that it hovered just above her left eye. And then she 